everybody. It's Bonnie Giller here on Intuitive Eating Wednesdays, and I'm happy to be here with you. So if you are here with me, come and say hello. Let me know that you're here for um, today's Intuitive Eating Wednesday question and answer session. So every Wednesday for the last three weeks, I've been doing Intuitive Eating Wednesdays where I am answering your questions and your struggles around intuitive eating and emotional eating. And you've submitted your questions to me. For those of you who are new to this Intuitive Eating Wednesdays, if you've not yet submitted your question or your emotional eating struggle, feel free to do that. All you have to do is either private message me on Facebook or email me at Bonnie at dietfreeradiantme.com and just put in the subject line question for intuitive eating Wednesdays. And I'll make sure to put that into my lineup of questions that I'm asking. I'm answering your questions. I'm, I'm answering your questions. So if you're here, when you come in to our, um, our broadcast today, just go ahead and say hello. Tell me who's here and where you're from if you're new to my community or not. And then we're gonna jump in. Basically, as a review, I'm just gonna wait a little bit until some people arrive. Um, every Wednesday, if you've signed up, you will receive an email at 9 a.m. Eastern with the question or struggle of the day. And then we'll talk. I'll talk a little bit about it in the email and then there'll be a link to a blog post that I've written. Um, to give you more information and answer and an answer to the question. And there will be a free gift for you to help you really break through this question, break through the struggle. So the last couple of weeks, if you want to check out what I've talked about, just head on over to dietfreeradiantme.com, click on the blog uh, tab on the navigation bar, and you'll see the last um, two weeks, the last three weeks uh, topics. And you can grab your free gift as well, which are generally worksheets that will help you to implement what I've been teaching you on these live trainings. So that's pretty much an overview of what we do. And then I come in to the Facebook Live to really go a little bit deeper with you and answer your questions. So again, as you come in, please come and say hello. Tell me who's here so we can make this um, as interactive as possible. I really love to have interaction, as you all know already. So just say hi. Tell me who's here. And um, and then we'll talk. So let me get into the question um, out of respect for your time, for those who have shown up here. Um, let me get into today's question. And today's question is actual, it's actually a question and a struggle. Now, this came in from two women that are in my private Facebook community. That community is the Diet Free Radiant Me Intuitive Eating Support Community. If you're not a part of that group, um, you should be. It's a free group, a free community of women um, who are on the same journey. Um, Kay, hi, Kay. Kay is here joining us. Kay is saying it's not working. Now, Kay, I'm not sure what is not working. Um, if do you you don't hear me, Kay? Um, just click on. Make sure you click on the video. Hey, Sandy, so glad that you're here. Okay, so Sandy's here. So I think I know that it's working. Chelsea's here. She says it's working on her end. So, Kay. Maybe log out and log back in, and hopefully it will work with you. Okay, so as you are coming in, Sandy hears me. Excellent. Great, Sandy. So happy to hear you and see you here today. Um, okay, so I was saying that if you are not yet a part of my private Facebook group, you need to be because we are um, – it's complete – filled with women who are on the intuitive eating journey and supporting each other. I'll put the link below for you. Um, okay, so let me get into today's question and um, the struggle that was shared by actually two women that are in my Facebook group. And I'm going to read it to you. It goes like this. The question is, I know choosing certain foods makes me feel healthy and vibrant. I also know there are certain foods that make me feel the opposite, drain my energy and leave me feeling sluggish. How do I approach health in this way without viewing food as good and bad? So that's one question that came in. If you resonate with that question and you have the same question, let me know. 
in the comments. Let me know that that's something you also feel. Now, the struggle that came in, so this came in more as a comment to me, something that she struck, this woman is struggling with, not so much as a question. And it goes like this, Bonnie, I can't appreciate the Bonnie, the body I have now because it isn't healthy. I know losing the extra fat will help those issues, but I can't stop labeling food as healthy or unhealthy. I keep reading not to label foods, but we all know broccoli is healthier for you than a Hershey bar. I feel like the extra fat will not go away along with all the health problems until I start feeding myself healthier foods, which feels like a diet. I try to eat mostly healthy, but it seems once I eat the unhealthier foods, that's all I crave because they taste better to me. Help. So that's what she submitted to me. And I looked at both the question that I read before, and I looked at the struggle that um, this other woman submitted to me. And I said, you know what? Both of these things have one thing in common. And I wanted to address it today in our, uh, on our blog and in our training today. And that one thing is that both women are labeling food. Okay. We're labeling food as good, bad, healthy, unhealthy. Now, perhaps you watching might even label your foods as legal, illegal, right? How else do you label your food? So when you are, as a dieter, when you are dieting, or if you are watching this and you are still dieting, how do you label your foods? How do you label the lists of foods that you have that dictate what you can eat and can't eat? Let me know in the comments. If you're listening on replay, definitely come and post your answer to this question. I'll come back and comment. So most of the time I'm seeing lists that are headed up with subtitles or titles that says can, can't, good, bad, healthy, unhealthy, legal, illegal. Any of these ways we're looking at foods are considered we're labeling our foods. And labeling your food is the trait of a dieter. It shows that you still possess a diet mentality. Sandy says fattening versus not fattening. Okay. So Sandy fattening versus not fattening would mean for you what? Fattening foods I quote unquote can't eat and not fattening foods I quote unquote can eat. Is, is that what your, your labeling of foods would reflect for you? Most likely that answer is, is yes. So and it's very interesting for you to stop and think about. I want everybody to do that. How do you label your foods? How do you label your list of foods? Because that will dictate what you, quote unquote, allow yourself to eat or not allow yourself to eat. And will Sandy says, yes, okay. And that'll dictate whether you are still going to be stuck in a diet mentality, okay? So labeling food is definitely the trait of a dieter. It shows that you are still stuck in that diet mindset. And so if you, if you are on the intuitive eating journey and you are trying so hard to, as our first, um, Lisa says, Lisa gives a thumbs up to Sandy. I guess she's agreeing with Sandy. Um, if, if you are on this journey and, and you're trying to listen to your body, right? You, and you like our first person that submitted the question, um, hey, Susanna, I'm so glad you found me. Yes, I'm in a different page today. Every day I pop up in a different page for Facebook Live. So here I am. Um, so if, um, like the first person who submitted the question, right? So she says, choosing certain foods makes me feel healthy and vibrant. Um, I know that other foods makes me feel um, sluggish and drains my energy, right? But she's still looking at that as good or bad. So here, here's the thing about that that woman is still stuck in a diet mentality. So listening to signals, it, it's if you're not past that diet, if you haven't shifted out of that diet mentality, you're always going to hit that brick wall, which is what I'm trying to say. Because labeling good, healthy, bad, unhealthy, any of those labels that you give, your actions will be based on the labels you give the food. Does that make sense? Your actions will be based on the label you give the food right? Now, again, you know you feel vibrant and strong when you eat what you call good foods or healthy foods, but you're still craving what you called the bad or the unhealthy food, yet you know they're no good for them, so what do you do? You're restricting them, right? 
disguised in the thought of I'm doing it for my health, right? You're restricting these foods in the name of your health. But here's the problem with that. You're still dieting. It's not in the name. You think it's in the name of your health, but it's really the food police voice that is still speaking. So in fact, what happens is you restrict. And what happens when we restrict? What happens when we restrict? We feel deprived, right? Susanna says it makes sense, but we I still want but still want sweets. Right, absolutely. And there's nothing wrong with having sweets, right? It's once you give yourself that unconditional permission to eat. And we're going to get into that in just a moment. Right, we binge, Susanna, exactly. Restriction leads to deprivation. And when you feel deprived, and then if you have an emotional trigger, what happens? You fall into that what the heck effect. What the heck? I'm just going to eat it. And you end up overeating. You end up binge eating. And then what do you feel afterwards? Who wants to say, what do you feel afterwards? You feel guilt. You feel shame. Maybe hopeless the negative self-talk begins over again. And that's how the vicious cycle continues. Yes, Chelsea says guilty. Right. And we don't want to feel guilt when we eat. There's no reason to have guilt after we eat. We should enjoy our food. Kay says the video is not working. I've turned off and on my iPad. No luck. Okay, I'm so sorry. Okay. Yes, there will be a replay. I'm so sorry. Susanna gets angry at herself. Yes. You get angry at yourself because then you're like, here I go again, right? Here I go again. Why can't I do this? Why can't I have the willpower? And and by the way, willpower is something we spoke about in our very first Intuitive Eating Wednesday. So if you didn't get a chance to watch that replay and grab the download that I gave you there, go ahead and, and check my blog at dietfreeradiantme.com. Two weeks ago, um, I had a, a, a blog and a free gift all around willpower. And there's a video training on that as well um, on this page. So you should definitely check that out. So the idea here is to give yourself unconditional permission to eat those foods. But before you do, you need to understand when and how these negative associations with these foods began. And I think this is a very important point that not everybody really does. Why do you think, and I'll just pull any food out of the air right now, why do you think chocolate is bad for you? Or like our, um, the woman who submitted the question, she says a Hershey bar, right? She says, um, I feel, what is she right here? I keep reading not to label foods, but we all know broccoli is healthier for you than a Hershey bar. Okay. so. Was there a childhood event? Was there a parent forbidding chocolate for you when you were growing up? Were these, did these become forbidden foods? If so, when, how early in your life, what was the situation? What was the first association around these foods that they've become forbidden for you? It's important to understand that not to kind of just brush that under the rug. Cause if we really fully want to be able to give ourselves unconditional permission to eat, we have to really understand how our mindset got to where we are today. If you're just joining us, please come and say hello. Let me know who's here if you haven't already done so. Okay, so does that make sense for everybody? So again, our questions are, how do I stop labeling food good, bad, healthy, and unhealthy? I know that when I eat certain quote unquote healthy foods, I feel great, but I still want the other foods. Well you're still sitting with a diet mindset. And so we must shift away from that dyer's mindset. Very important and is a very, very important step in the process. Okay. In order for you to really be at peace with all foods. So we are in, you know, here's the interesting thing. When you are sitting with a dieter's mindset, it's really not in this early in this process, it's not about, what food is more nutritious for me? What food is healthier for me? Because as I said before, you are thinking you're making a choice in good health, 
but it's really disguised because that food police voice is still screaming in your head. Those rules are still screaming in your head. And so it's so important at the start of this journey to say, okay, right now it's not about nutrition. We'll get to nutrition at the right time. Right now it's about understanding how my diet mindset became so strongly entrenched. Okay, so Susanna says, makes sense, but still feel guilty about sweets. Apparently haven't gotten down far enough about family history. So Susanna, I have a worksheet for you that I'm going to, um, maybe you've already gotten that worksheet. And I'd like you to complete the worksheet. And I know Susanna's in, in you're in the Freedom to Eat Forever uh, private closed Facebook group. So I'd like you to come to that group and we'll dig a little bit deeper for you, okay? Because it's really very important. I want you to be able to enjoy your sweets without guilt and without overeating and without binging. So we don't want to look at foods as good and bad, okay? So we have to understand where was the first association with this labeling of our foods. I was meeting with a client the other day and she shared that she was told from a young, young age that Oreos are no good, forbidden. She's not allowed to have them. And what happened to her? Oreos equaled all cookies. And she became extremely fearful of all cookies. And what happens? You restrict, you deprive, emotional trigger, you overeat, you go into the what the heck effect. Already had one, might as well finish it off. You end up binging and you end up feeling bad, negative self-talk, and the cycle continues. So today's lesson is all about how to stop labeling our foods. And what we want to do is first go back to when and what was the situation around the first association with those foods. Maybe it was a diet that you were put on, right? We know diets are very known for giving us lists of foods to eat and not to eat. And it feels so safe just to say, okay, I want to lose weight. Let me just follow the list of foods you gave me because that'll work for me. But that's setting that right there. Those lists are already setting in your mind. Okay. Those foods are good for me. And those foods are not good for me. Or like Sandy says, or um, Sandy, what was the words you use? Let's go back. Fatting or not fattening, right? Healthy, unhealthy, good, bad. Okay. So the freebie today is called, let's see, my gift for you is called Fleshing Out Your Good Bad, Your Good Foods and Bad Foods. And I would like you to really list your quote unquote good healthy foods and the first association you had with that and then the bad unhealthy foods and the first association with that. And really work on reprogramming your mind around these foods. Susanna says, yeah, okay reprogramming your mind around these foods and then begin to write out your thoughts or new thoughts around these foods that you have. It's definitely a process. Please understand this is not a quick fix, but you can't just say one day, okay, I'm going to stop thinking of these foods as good, bad. We have to drill down. We have to understand and then we have to slowly reprogram our mind and our, our brain. Okay. Okay. Okay, so um, in general, every week when we do these trainings, I try to give it, keep them to about 15 minutes or 20 minutes. Um, let me answer any questions that you have right now. If anybody has a question for me over good, bad foods, I want to get you thinking about this. I just want to give you some thought about this, right? If you are a dieter, if you've been a dieter, if you've been struggling, okay, and you've been quote unquote, trying the intuitive eating process and you're hitting a wall, you are more than likely sitting with the diet mindset and having intuitive eating be a little bit of a diet for you. Ask yourself a few questions. How strong is my diet mindset? And am I eating emotionally? 
perhaps the very first step for us is to recognize some of the emotions that are driving your eating. Remember, it's not the food, what you're eating, it's often the why, right? What's behind your eating? And again, I'll reference last week's Intuitive Eating Wednesday question, which was all around emotional eating. So sometimes if we start to understand the why behind our eating, why we're turning, what the emotional triggers are, and we could learn how to cope with our emotions without food by really understanding what emotional hunger feels like versus physical or biological hunger. We're then ready to say, okay, now my next step is no more diets, shifting my mindset and really being able to achieve that freedom to eat and not be obsessed about food and not feel guilty around food. Okay. So um, if you have just joined me, come say hi. If you have any questions, please let me know. I am going to put the link to the free gift in the, um, in the post, in the text for this video. And I hope you find that helpful. Let's have a discussion about that in our private Facebook group. So if you are a member of my Freedom to Eat Forever programs, let's have the conversation in that private Facebook group. If you're not in those programs, um, go ahead and um, come to my general public. It's closed, but private Facebook group called Diet Free Radiant Me Intuitive Eating Support. And if you're interested in speaking with me about learning more about um, Freedom to Eat Forever, just private message me. Susanna's just got an aha. Thank you so much for all you do, Bonnie. Oh, Susanna, thank you. Um, after I get off this live uh, Facebook Live, I'm going to go into our Freedom to Eat Forever Facebook group, and I want to hear what your aha is over there, okay? Can't wait to hear, Susanna. All right, guys. Um, anybody else have any questions? Kay, I think, left us. I think she couldn't get on. Lisa's here. Um, Chelsea's here and Sandy, I'm not really sure who else is here, but, um, please leave your comments and questions below. And again, if you are struggling or you have a question about intuitive eating or emotional eating, please submit your question to me by private message me on Facebook or email me Bonnie at dietfreeradiantme.com. And I will be more than happy to answer your question. All righty. Thanks everybody. Take care. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.